All right, I'm back. I'm back. Who else is back? Shell's here. Amazing. I only just saw your name. That's awesome. Hey, Bria. Hey, Ria. Hey, Kendra. Sarah. Deidre. Teresa. Ronit. Hey, Diamond. Nice to see you. Never left. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, such a privilege to be here with all of you. And uh, so, you know, big thanks to to all of you and Roche and Hannah and the team and everyone that's here. And the whole the whole crew, Scotty and Alexi and Miguel and Toos and James and Esther and May and Al, just the whole the whole lot. It's just awesome, you know, it's just awesome this this idea that we're creators and that we we can live a life in the creative orientation and by creating what we want what we don't want no longer exists and this whole premise it's really it's really massive you know and those of you out there looking for a life purpose come come join us teaching and helping as many people to realize their genius and their creative center because in my opinion, the more people that live creatively and live as, as a creator, the more people will be in their genius. And we're going to find ways to uh, clean up the oceans and to, you know, to, to create more sustainable living and to create, uh, you know, different structures, financial, political, educational and we're going to we're going to create a, a reality that really matters for all of us to experience because we really do have that opportunity to do it and i and i really really know that the more of us that get in that creative uh structure that we go all right well i need to create more money or i need to create this or i need to create that let's do it i've never met anyone getting into the creative structure that doesn't want to do anything other than have a great life for themselves and then help others just I haven't met anyone that uh, that once they're not living their unconscious agenda, they pretty much want to enjoy life themselves and then also others. I just I just haven't met anything else, and so it feels that the more that we can get to live that structure, the better it will be for everyone. So there, anyone that's going, I need a purpose. Come join us. We need more trainers, more coaches. Uh, and more people helping me get this um, this workout and this uh, this this book and other things out too, you know. So come come hang. All right. So we're going to shift gears into superconscious creator. So uh, I want you just to imagine that you've decided to spend ninety days completely uh, immersing yourself in this work. Like really, you've decided, you know what, I've enjoyed the book, I've enjoyed stuff, but I wanna, I wanna take the top level program. And, and I just want you to ask yourself, if I truly went into the highest level of Chris's work and the, well, not Chris's, the, our work, uh, uh, conscious education work, and where would I be? What would I be doing in 90 days when I was truly living uh, that creative orientation? And, and just just really what would what would life be like if you write it there because one thing I know is that that once you just live as a creator and you start focusing and, and teaching your unconscious how you want it to be life orients that way and it shifts and it is just magic it is just magic so uh, the, what I'm going into now is the very first session in our highest level, uh, of, of all of our work, okay? And uh, the course is called The Superconscious uh, Creator. So let me pull that session up. There we go. So welcome, welcome to the course. Welcome to day one uh, of it. And uh, you've been sent these, these notes. And first of all, I want to introduce you to a few working uh, premises or premise I, multiple premise. 
Uh, I wonder if I can make this a bit bigger. How do I do that? Make that zoom. I reckon 200% zoom. There we go. That's a bit better. The first focus of this course is personal power. And can someone write in personal power? This is the power to create the kind of life experience you choose. It also can be called creative power. This is very important. The degree to which you lack personal power, the degree to which you lack personal power is often the degree which you experience frustration. Before I really stepped into my power, I was, I was, I was out there in total dysfunction. And, and once I really realized that I'm the powerful creator, I need to create, not complain. And, and I learned to create what I want and be powerful and be decisive and be focused on what I want. You know, I built a massive business, um, found my purpose, married the love of my life, moved to paradise, you know, blah, 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 blah. The list just wrote a couple of best selling books, just the list. But it was that decision deciding to be the predominant and powerful creator in my life and, and focusing on what I want is, is massive. Many of us, uh, including me, were, uh, were not born into an orientation where we were allowed to be powerful, right? I weren't allowed to be powerful. We, we were always told what it is that we were allowed to do. And that conditioning it, it has, has been carried forward. But I want you to know right now is that you are a creative spirit and a creative essence. And it's actually your right to step into your creative essence and your creative power. It's actually, it's actually yours. When you're looking for purpose, and I think a lot of people here are looking for purpose in life. If you look at the purpose of, of everything else we see living, you know, we see, you know, animals and we see plants and, and we see the consciousness and we can see their purpose. If you were to look at humans and go, well, what's their purpose? It's to be creators. The one thing that we all do is we create. We see the future. We make it up. Education, art, um, technology, buildings, poetry music right we are supposed to create you know everything else you can see it's that's our that's what we're here to do we're here to create and if you're not creating if you're not turning your thoughts into things then you're not living your highest human potential we're here to create that's what we're here to do create great family create great food create a great garden to create. Who agrees with that? Like our purpose is to create what our heart and our head really wants to see in this world is we're here to create. This is the first premise of being a super conscious creator is that our purpose is to create. It's not a, it's not a choice and you can create dysfunction or you can create magic, but we are here to create. And that's actually the second, uh, the second premise on your notes is that you're, you have a true nature and purpose. You have a true nature and purpose. Now, your truest nature is to be a creator. How you apply that, perp that, that true purpose, that, that is that true nature, is your purpose. So I want to ask you, what has been on your list of things you would just love to create, but you haven't? Right. And, and we're not going to judge you about, oh, you should have done it. But, but how many of you have written down that you want to create a lot more money? Who's written down that you'd like to create a different body or a different relationship? Who's thought about creating a retreat center? Who's thought about creating books or art or poetry? Who's wanting to create a family? Who wants to create experiences and travel the world? Who wants to create a great business that makes people smile? Who wants to create uh, beautiful gardens? A beautiful what, what are things that you want to create? And you, you need to have a list of creations that you are. This is actually what I'm applying, this beautiful um, super conscious endowment that I've been given. This is how I'm applying it. And this is what I'm going to create. And a life worth living, in my opinion, is creating what matters most to you. It's creating what matters most to you. Right. And the first thing that matters most to me is I want to feel good. Right. It's all about feeling good, feeling on purpose, feeling healthy, feeling vital, feeling in the moment, being surrounded by great friends. I want that. 
And then it's like, what else do you want to create? I love it. Creating what matters most to you. And so this course, Superconscious Creator, provides you with the foundation. In fact, we, uh, we give you every single week, there's multiple meditations that you must go through. And it's, it's seriously, it's the most advanced. Uh, can I just ask, how many of you have done some of my other programs? Cre who, who's done some of the other ones? Yeah. This is the most advanced, just so you know. This is, there's no recode. This is what um, Vance had uh, Mike doing in the book, the creative process. Okay, so so the next thing uh, that that's that's in the the course. So the first thing is personal power, true nature, and purpose. And then the third thing is your creative process. Okay, I want you to know you have a creative process. However, most of us have never had any formal training in creating. If you're wanting to create a, a successful business, a new body, a loving relationship, a nice night out, if you want to create a, a, an outfit to wear, it's the same process. Whatever it is that, that, that you do to create something small, create dinner, create a great day, create a nice movie night, okay? Whatever it is, it's the same process about creating you know, a, a multi-million dollar company or whatever, it's the same process. You must learn your specific creative process, how you do it. And we're going to help you and, and guide you to do it. One of the keys is, is that, uh, is that your, your mind will follow the images and sounds that you give it. And learning to put the right images, the right emotions with the right sounds in the right way. We're going to go through it today, by the way, with creative visualization, learning creative visualization and learning structural tension and learning how innocence and learning how to how to be a creator is the most important skill as we move forward into uh, the age of AI. One thing that AI will not be able to do is to step into the field and uh, and have consciousness in the way we we, we need to realize that uh, creativity is going to be the one thing that, that we get to keep doing. So the creative process, um, first off, uh, there are two orientations we have, okay? There's the problem orientation. Now, who saw uh, Mike getting stuck in the problem orientation many times? The problem orientation is where we react or respond to circumstance. We get the idea our job is to respond, improve, or fix, right? This is reactive. This is responsive. This is what we call the problem orientation. It is only focused on what you're trying to fix or get rid of. The other orientation is your creative orientation. This is where what you want to create and your choices are the driving force. And so our world is mostly focused on problems. Who agrees with that? Like out there, uh, news, politicians, society, uh, everywhere is, is problem, 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 problem. When you problem solve, all your motivation is to rid yourself of what you do not want. I do not want a sick grandmother. I do not want, right? That's it. That's what he wanted. He's just trying to get rid of it. All successful people, all, full stop, all successful people stop focusing on their circumstances, problems or disadvantages or anything else and just focus on what they desired to create. This is crucial. In the problem orientation, the problem is the factor that organizes life. And so Mike's problem was that uh, he lost his parents and had to get saved, right? And so that was the problem is that he was always worried about losing family, losing. And if you succeed in eliminating what you don't want, I want to hold my family together. There is no guarantee you'll have what you do want. You see that he was lost in it. Right. And it's such a good book. Gosh, it's a good book. You know, it just explains that so clearly is that you can solve all your problems and still not have what you want. Right. You can solve all your problems and still not have what you want. So Mike could have gone and got the money, right? And got a loan and solved everything he thought he needed to solve, but he doesn't have what he wants because what did he really want? Love and connection with his family. Is it true? That's what he really wants. And so many of us get stuck. We get stuck uh, in this problem-solving reality. 
I want you to get this. Your life is not a problem to be solved. It isn't. Your life is actually a blank page ready for you to write the story of magical creation. Now, problem solving has its place, right? You do not decorate a burning down house, right? If your house is on fire, you put it out, uh, right? It, it does have its place. But in the whole, if you live as a creator, the problems don't exist anymore. So over time, living as a creator, the problems disappear because you've created the life you want. And so we've actually been taught our whole life to respond to circumstances we find ourselves in. Okay. Instead, we must shift to the creative process. Now, this is what the next night, can I just ask, let me just check in. How many of you would love to spend, you know, 90 days from September to the end of the year, really in our most advanced work, taking what you've learned from us to the absolute next level, like really, 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 really going for it. Because if you would, the creative process is what you must learn. It only has one outcome, which is to create the results you desire. The first thing, thanks everyone typing in yes, by the way, you legends. I'd love to see you there. The first is the mechanics. So what do we do in the creative process? What do we actually do? We must have every single one of you understand what it is that you do when you are a creator. Second, the orientation. So you must become it now. And three, your creative spirit, expressing your true nature and purpose. Your creative process is a journey to the end result. That's it. That's it. Like literally, it's a journey to the end result of creating what you really love, not what your dysfunctional, unconscious, egoic agenda thinks you want. Who agrees with that? Like, you know, there's Mike. He's out there, right? And gosh, the book is just going to uh, be through the whole of all of our course moving forward because he's right. So what's he doing? He, he's out there trying to get the money and solve this and solve that and have this and all these things, right? He's trying to, but what does he really bloody want? He just wants to have his family. And, and, so, and he's just so frightened of losing them like he lost his parents. And so instead of having, instead of having grandma just live with him and, and have it, he's, he's doing everything else. And by doing it all, he's missing what he really wants. Right? And, and that's the problem orientation. That's the problem orientation for sure. So, uh, and you guys have all been sent these notes, by the way. Most don't go for what they want. They only go for desires or goals based on their circumstances or based on what they think is possible. Asking yourself, what do I really want is not as easy as it sounds. We will help you develop this skill through practice. Every day, we're going to work on this one thing. Actually, I'm going to give you this as extra homework. So in the creator course, we actually introduce it in week two. But I'm going to introduce it now because you guys are advanced, advanced. Do, do, you guys happy that I uh, add some extra, extra in? Extra, extra on top of it all. So here's your challenge if you're willing to accept it. Here's the challenge. We actually introduce this throughout uh, the course, so you will bump into it, but I'm going to introduce it now. In the creator course, there's one thing that we ask everyone to do every day, and it is to create one outcome every day just because you love it. And so here's the challenge is every day create one thing for no other reason than you just would love to create it. It can be a bubble bath. It can be a walk with someone you love. It can be um, going down and, and uh, buying a coffee. It can be a date night. It can be a beautiful meal. It can be anything. But here's the rules. It's one thing that you're going to create that you wouldn't have done unless you're doing this process. 
And so what we do, and so by the end of 90 days, there's 90 things that you've created just because you would love it. And so here's what you're going to do every morning. You're going to close your eyes and you're going to ask yourself, what is one thing I would just love to create that I wasn't already going to create? And you'll go, oh, it'd be really nice to have, you know, just a, a bubble bath. Or I'm going, to, I'm going to take myself after work and I'm going to go and like, you know, I'm going to get, get a massage or a sauna or I'm going to do this or I'm going to go for a walk or I'm going to read poetry or I'm going to. And it's just one. And it doesn't have to cost money. It doesn't have to be big, anything at all. It just... Uh, it's just one thing, and there's no, it's just what you would love. It could be a drawing. It could be a phone call to a friend, but it just has to be something you love that you weren't going to do anyway. So who's up for the challenge? It's so much fun, and you'll just find that there's so many things that you can create that are just fun that you would just love to create. And it's these little sprinkles of joy that just make, make your life way better. And it becomes a habit. And if there's any habit that the creator course teaches you, it's that you just get to create things that feel good, that you love. And uh, you might love helping people. So you might create that you donate some time or you might, you know, go, go and help out somebody because it feels good to help, doesn't it? So it doesn't, it's not all about just getting. Most of the time, what feels good to me is giving. And so you just do one a day. And anyway, so this can be one of the things, uh, we actually introduced it, I think, in week two, after we do, we do morning routine week two. So no, it must be week three. Yeah, we have this amazing um, super conscious morning routine that we, we help. Uh, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. The course starts, uh, you guys can start it straight away today, but we, um, we start properly in September. Anyway, so uh, in, in Superconscious Creator, we have daily practice and they're there to build skills of how to create and it's muscle building in the creative process, you know? And, uh, and it's really important, you know, it's, it's basically what Vance's grandfather uh, taught, taught us all, right? Like it's, it's the real program. So another working premise is, uh, is that we, we divide the mind into a few separate areas and this is very important. The first is the self-conscious, okay? So you you and I, we have a self-conscious mind. This is the rational mind, conscious. It makes decisions, discriminates, makes definitions, analyzes. The most important thing that your self-conscious does is it makes choices based on your desires. What am I going to do? It makes choices. What am I going to create? And choice is the main way uh, that we connect with your self-conscious is through choice making. The second part uh, of your uh, consciousness is the superconscious, which is a, an aspect of your mind uh, that seems to exist above and beyond uh, the normal limitations of the self-conscious mind, right? You might call it inner teacher, higher self. You might call it creative inspiration, the voice within, but it's this, this aspect of us that's, that's greater than mind. And we're going to help you move into superconscious, get teaching, get awareness from your superconscious, and bring it into reality. However, the unconscious is the key to the mind's power. Even when we work in the superconscious, we're working in the superconscious to update the unconscious. Okay, so I want you to really get this. Hey, can I just ask you guys enjoying uh, your introduction to the Creator Course? Because it's uh, it's not um, it's not our beginner's work, you know. This is this is our advanced stuff. One of the most important things is being in rapport with the unconscious mind. It is truly the key to the mind's power. Truly, it is truly the unconscious uh, it maintains a clear picture of every event in your life. And many studies have, have actually uh, demonstrated this profound wealth of information. Now, the interesting thing about the unconscious is that using all this information from, from conception to now and what's been passed down in your genes, it actually deduces the information or draws conclusions from what's available. Now, your unconscious attracts 
what it concludes. So to say this in a nutshell, the unconscious manifests what it concludes. If it assumes that it's hard to make money, that's what if it assumes that relationships end and break, if it assumes people will let you down, then it creates that. See, Mike's assuming he's not worthy. So he keeps attracting situations where he thinks he's not worthy. He walks into the, uh, the golf restaurant, assumes he's not worthy. He's not able to do it. He's on the racetrack. He assumes he must go slow because he can't. He's going to go into a spin. He assumes he's going to um, be booed off stage. He assumes. And then because the unconscious is concluding that what he assumes to be true, he then manifests a situation where Jax is trying her luck with him and then racing to his wife. You see that? That was, if you think about it, Mike created it. He created it. And it's all about, and by him, it's his unconscious. Our unconscious creates what it assumes to be true. And as his assumptions change, then what he's assuming changes. How does it change? He does the process we're going to do today. As he gets into his end result, he connects with it and creates different assumptions. Mike doesn't think that he created all of that mess. He doesn't think that he created a, a psychiatry practice that, that can't work for him. He doesn't, he doesn't think it's him that's doing that. He doesn't think that it's him that has created how stressed out he is about his, uh, his grandmother. And he doesn't realize that Nana, through her assumption, is, is creating her need to look after something. Right? Now, here's the key. It's the unconscious that's assuming it. And if it's unconscious, it means you don't know. What's holding your reality together? You consciously don't know until we start shedding some light on it. We turn on those high beams of the, uh, of the Lamborghini. Just as a side note, do you guys all know that I have a black Lamborghini? And uh, I totally, totally love turning the lights off on it. And, uh, and it is absolutely effing terrifying driving that thing and turning the lights off. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't be that fast. <laughs> so your unconscious attracts what it concludes. Here's what I want you to get, okay? Is the unconscious responds to your self-conscious direction. Now, you've, you, you're in this continual process of giving the unconscious direction, okay? In that, the unconscious takes all that you input as direction. So important. So if the unconscious manifests what it concludes and you're always telling it what you want, then why don't you have more of what you want? And the answer is that we contradict ourselves. We are giving contradictory instructions to the unconscious. So really hear this out. When you want a result and then you consider all of the problems involved with getting the result, the unconscious concludes that you do want it, but that there are going to be problems in getting it. It is so crucial to give the unconscious clear suggestions and then let the unconscious create the process that brings the results into reality, okay? Considering process, limits how it can show up. This is a silent suggestions are vital to understand. So if you are focusing on something, it's what are you telling the unconscious as you're focusing on it? A lot of people don't just focus on what they want. They focus on all the things that could go wrong and how they're going to do it. And the unconscious concludes all of that to be true. The number one thing we must learn how to do is to get clear. I just want this. Now, 
as a side note, when I just stopped feeling guilty about wanting to make lots of money and just said, I would like that, it was like faster than fast. I went from struggling, 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 dead set made the decision. Within six months, I think we're doing like four or $500,000 a month. It was ridiculous. And that, it, it's such a clear example in my head that I just, I just remember it. When I work with people who make the clear decision, they do want to be healthy and they want to go uh, and run a marathon and they just say, that's what they want. They just, they, they and no other thoughts in their mind. That's it. No other contradiction. There's nothing else in them. That's what they're going to have. That's how it's going to be. And that clarity is so important. When I just decided I'm writing a transformational fiction book, I didn't think, I don't know how to write transformational fiction. I didn't even pass high school. I can't spell very well. <laughs> Like, I didn't think about all of that. I didn't think, I don't know about care. I didn't, there was so much I didn't know, it blew my mind. And so I made this decision and that was it. I said, I'm gonna do it. I didn't know anything else. So I start writing a book and I, and I get some help and I realize I know nothing about character development. I'm like, oh, what have I got myself into? But you gotta stay on it, right? I don't love this. I don't know plots. I didn't know that there were three parts to a story. I didn't know that you need to loop drama inside of drama. I didn't know all of these things. And so all I did is say, that's what I'm going to do. And then as I start going, oh, wow, okay, right, what's in a good book? And you start piecing it together. And then, you know, you guys are the only ones that, that's read it. But in my opinion, it's a really good bloody book, right? And so you, you, you have to, you have to, um, you have to just give your unconscious clear instructions. Right. And then what will happen is, yes, of course, I thought, well, what will people, you know, what if it's crap? What if that? What if this? Blah, blah, blah. Right. Right. It's it's all, you know, all of that's there. What if I launch this book and everyone goes, boo, you know, all of those things are there. But but you just got to get your unconscious focus. This is the most important thing is you got to give your unconscious clear instructions, not oh, I really want to have a successful business. And then in your mind, but how will I do that and spend time with my family? Just decide to have a business that works with one hour a day. That's what you want. Just to bloody decide it. Stop all this rattle. You know, there's this really famous book called The Four Hour Workweek, right? And it's hilarious to me because I've got a couple of businesses that are zero hour work weeks because they're run by other people. I do one hour a month, right? What's this? You see, it's just, of course, people own a business and it works without them. Of course, what are you talking about? Like, of course. But we, well, how will I do it? Oh, what if this? Oh, all of that, that's what's causing. Yeah, it's a good book, but isn't it ridiculous? Like, why four hours? Like, it makes no sense. Why not just zero hours? Why not just own a business that works? Anyway, it just makes me laugh. So, but do you guys get the point? Can I get some feedback? You guys get the point? Is that we, we, we contradict our goals. We contradict it big time. And our unconscious just takes the contradiction and creates it because it always says yes. So um, as a silly metaphor, when John decides he wants a car, his unconscious says, yes, you want a car. He then begins to consider how to get a car. He thinks how hard it is to finance the car. His unconscious says yes and receives a suggestion it's hard to finance cars. This becomes a contradictory suggestion to having the car. Then John begins to think cars nowadays are overpriced. His unconscious says yes. And taxes and insurance and other costs of a car. His unconscious says yes. And don't forget the cost of gas. His unconscious says yes. And goes about finding how hard it is to have a car with all of these problems in it, right? Then since he's given his unconscious all of these suggestions, right? There are all these problems. His unconscious, you know, gets the, concludes the idea that he wants a car but the cars are hard to get. And there's this result of the overemphasis of the how is the, the, is the complete opposite of innocence. 
Innocence is not knowing. This is making up how it's going to be, right? This doesn't mean you should never uh, not consider the process. It's just not being super conscious when you consider all that, all the hows. But this is what we do. We literally, or we're going to get into some um, some work now. We're going to get into some uh, some closer exercise. But but how many of us do it, right? We say, I want a relationship, but but you know, men are this or women are that. Da, 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 and what about this? And what about time? What about my kids? Blah, 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 and how about this? And they do this, and all of this gets put in the unconscious. Goes, yep, okay. The most challenging thing that I see for for creators is that just like Mike. What that they they just 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 be like Mike. Don't be like Mike. They uh, <laughs> they 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 don't just say this is what I want. They have so much rattle, you know, like a like so much shake, so much noise, head noise around it. They don't just say this is what I want. I just want to make millions of dollars a week. They say, oh, but uh, I feel guilty and I need to give it away. And I don't know. you can still give it to people, but you just have the clear choice. And they have another one. I want to have, uh, I want to, uh, you know, help people. And I want, I want to spend time with my kids. They just, they just, um, they don't get this just, that's how it's going to be. And it's going to be easy. And they just need us. We all need to start concluding that it's allowed to be easy. I'm going to choose this. It's going to be easy. There's going to be things to overcome. That's how it will be. Does that make sense? It, it really, that's important. So we need some choices is what I'm trying to say. Uh, we need to have some, some choices that we're going to create in life. Okay. So just, uh, just like Vance did to, for Mike, <laughs> I get to do it for you. So one of the most effective ways of teaching your unconscious to be more responsive is by choosing and working with a goal or a choice. The goal acts as a focus for the unconscious, okay? So we want you all to pick something you would like to create. Now you can write it in or write it down. We want you to pick something that you want. The goal has some rules. First, it cannot involve any other people. This is the first mistake that Mike makes. He tries to say, I want my, you know, my family to be ha um, healthy. I want my Nana this. I want all this for other people. It's actually impossible to make choices for other people. You, you, it's, they've got their own free will to create what they like. You see? You're not, it's, it's not right. Your goal is about you. Next, your choice or goal should be something uh, tangible uh, or specific. It can, it can be material or non-material. So you could say, I choose to live my purpose or to be happy. You want to form your goal or your choice in the present tense, like you already have it. Okay. And really important, make sure that your choice, your goal is, is something you want, not a process. Now, here's the most important thing. It does not matter, friends, what the goal is. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Honestly, whatever you, you put down in Creator, we can help you create it. It doesn't matter. You can go create a bunch of money. You can go create uh, uh, you know, a, a, a mortgage-free house. You, you know, you could create whatever you want. You could just create, you know, a happy household, right? What it, it doesn't matter because what matters is that you write something down and then you manifest it. You cross it off. And then you put something else down and then you cross it off when you manifest it. Why does that matter more? than what the choice is. Hmm. Hmm. Because if you teach your unconscious that creating is fun and easy and that you can do it, all you then do is apply that same principle to all the amazing things that you want. There's honestly no difference to, between making $1 and making a million. 
They just have different elements in the creation. There's no difference between uh, creating a habit of uh, going for a walk every single day uh, or uh, creating a new body. They're just different elements that have, you have to take an action, you have to follow through, you have to focus on it. You have to, it's just, so it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how big, how small. We're just going to help you set, set down choices and they're going to actually have you tick them off. This is the key. How many of you would love the feeling of writing down five or six things and then those five or six things existing and then writing down another five or six? Can I just get some feedback? A yes or one jam on the keyboard, do a hand up, do something. Just if that was where, what you could do, you write it down, you say, I want to write a book. Then you do it and then there's a book. Or I want to have a body that's this size. Then you do it, it's there. I want to have a, a new house by the beach. You do it, it's there. You know, just having that that life. That's creator. Creator is that your whole system goes, I write it down, uh, I visualize it, I set my mind on it, I teach my unconscious exactly what I want, I take the action, and then it's there. And then I cross it off, I celebrate it, and I write the next thing down that I want to go and have fun creating. That's creator. And it's just this cycle of joy of new things, you know? It's so funny because. Uh, you know, released the book on um, Tuesday, and I sat there Tuesday afternoon. And I was like, "Oh gosh, well, I'm going to write the next book now." <laughs> Cross it off, and I was like, "All right, what's the next book I need to write?" And I'm tossing up between Superconscious Recode or Superconscious Power, uh, and I'm like, "All right, uh, here we go." And uh, I actually wrote the the um, the draft outline. <laughs> but let's go. I wanna, you know, I want to do it again. I want to. I want to do it again. And uh, it's like just being on that is so much fun. So it's not about what it is. Okay. So we're going to do uh, some choice making and do some exercises and, and stuff here. Uh, I'm just going to uh, move forward in the notes. Am I going to use the notes? Yeah. Yes, I am. Okay, so we want to create uh, a few few things of what it is you want to create. And we're going to aim for five, minimum three. We're going to aim for five. Yeah, we're going to loop back to what's in the notes. Okay, so as a, as a fun game, just as a fun game, what are five things that you would just love to create um, between now and the end of the year? You know? Just five five things. What would be what would be five fun things that you'd like to like to create? You know, um, just between now and the end of the year. So, you know, is it you know a business that makes some money online? Is it a, a, a body size? Um, and it just just have some fun. What are five things that you would love to to create? Just a, yeah, seriously, it's like a like a Santa's list. Cool. So just write five five things down, and um, you can do it on your own piece of paper. I'd say that's best and and um and just just go just five five things and give me a number five in the chat box when you've written five things that you would like to create by the end of the year so those of you that have already got big true end results we're not talking about that we're talking about desired realities between now and the end of year awesome just five things so you know you might choose so one of my choices i want to be uh single figures in golf uh what's another choice I'm going to Africa in two days, so that's going to be great. Uh, I've got a event coming in the United States, so I'm going to create that uh, in October. So what else am I going to create between now and the end of the year? Uh, I probably want to finish draft of a new book. Yep. Africa. USA, golf, new book, that's for, oh yeah, I'm launching a new, a new company. So uh, five things you wanna create, cool. Okay. Cool, so, so I see a bunch of you have done that. Now, some of you um, have struggled. And I just, I just know I don't even have to ask. Some of you have struggled. So here's a here's a different uh, question. Okay, so leave those leave those five there. Okay, and and, and just let them. Um, 
you know, just just let them let them sit and let them let them be. I'd like you to write down, please, five things uh, that aren't working well in your life. So five things that aren't working well. So this is a new exercise. Um, so five five things that just aren't aren't working well. So uh, I wish you know I wish I my my body shape's not quite the right shape that I would like. Um, I'm fighting a lot with my husband or my spouse. Uh, you know I wish I had a bit more money. Um, there's five things, right? Five things that are not working well. Don't be dramatic about it, Karen. Just five. Yeah, it can be easier, Helen. Yeah. Just five, okay? <laughs> it's just a fun, fun game. Don't overthink it. So we've already done five creations, but like now I'm saying, what are five things that are not working well? I'm sure you all have five things not working well. We all we all do. Yeah, I would I would like more people to know about my work. What's not working well? Okay, so um, awesome, awesome. Okay, so if you've written five things that are not working well, here's what I want you to do. Okay, I want you to cross them out one at a time and write how you would like it okay so for example if you wrote you know um currently um my golf handicap is at 12 cross it out and you put how you do want it my golf handicap is now uh three or you might write um i am not motivated going to the gym cross it out and write i am now motivated going to the gym so take the five, how they're not working well, cross each one out and write how you'd like it to be. Awesome. So. I'm frustrated with my spouse. I'd like to be happy. I'm not earning, I'm only earning X amount. I want to earn this, cross it out. Cool. Okay, so let me know when you've done that. So we should have five things you want to create. And then there's now five things that are the opposite of what's not working well. So there should be a lot of information uh, there. Okay, should be a lot of information. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that uh, to turn them into five choices, five results that you are really focused on creating. So on page 13, through all that information that you've just written down, I'd love you to choose between three and five that you are dead, dead set, really committed that you're going to go for those um, but you know, in the creative program between now and the end of the year, like let's, oh, and I want to hear from a few people and then we're going to get into the visualization. So it's a, it's a good way. Um, yeah. So cross it out, Linda, and then write down how you want it to be. Hey, yeah, I get it. Sounds, it sounds like a really tough thing. You just need to cross it and go, okay, so what do I want to create? We, you know, we don't need to, um, we don't need to focus on them. We just need to let them go and then create what we do want. Very nice. Depends, um, Margo. Depends. Good way to help people find choices. Nice. Very nice. I'd love to, I'd love you to type him in. Is it fun? Nice. Who's got five? Nice, Arthur. I like it. So um, Arthur's written his five. Make 5,000 a month. Number two, land is split and rezone. Beautiful. Met soulmates. Uh, sounds like a, a nice group. 
um, have more motivation, have lots of energy. Awesome. That's five great creations. Nice. Awesome, Linda. Fantastic. That's fine if it's emotional. Just write it down. I'll give you some coaching. I have it. Type them in if you want some coaching, and I'll um, I'll I'll read them out and give you coaching. It is a great exercise, Alana. Uh, Christy, host my first in-person live event. Two, write my program. Three, weekly horse rides. Great. What three great creations? Fantastic. Uh, deep, intimate relationship. Joyful fun with the variety of my children. Five thousand income monthly. Giving value to other people. Feeling joyful and playful every day. Beautiful. Love it. Purpose, online business, sales easily. Um, oh, I just wanted five things. We'll get to how to write them, um, Muriel, later. Yeah, very nice. Very nice, Helen. Work less in a job I love for great pay. Yep. Awesome, Linda. I love it. Nice, Teresa. Very nice. Oh, awesome, Kendra. Love to see you there. Claudette, here we go. One, I have a great job that pays me well enough. Two, non-smoker. Three, best shape of my life. Awesome. Four, thriving and happy marriage. Nice. Five, follow through. I do what I say. I'm going to do it. I walk the talk. Amazing. Amazing. Nice. Very nice, Marsha. Nice. Veronica, create a happy relationship. Now have a mortgage-free home, size 12. Beautiful, amazing, loving family, great hopes. Cool, cool, cool. All right, this is this is amazing. And, and the, what I want you to do is everyone that's writing out is, is fantastic. The one thing I want to add that I've read a few times is you just need to know when you've actually, when this is to be ticked off, okay? So sometimes... We have a tendency to, to put down choices, but we don't actually let our unconscious know when this is done. So we're about to do that with the visualization is actually create a moment in our future timeline when we know that this choice is done, like we've completed it. And by the way, um, those of you who choose to take me up on uh, the offer I'm going to give you for Creator, we're going to give you daily meditations and visualizations to do to make sure your unconscious truly just just lets you have this with ease. Very cool. Uh, awesome, Teresa. Very awesome. Nice, Trion. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Love it. Okay. So, good stuff. Now, um, visualization is uh, a method of making a really strong pressure on your unconscious. Now, visualization uh, includes something that's um, visual, an image. It can be a movie or still. Also, sound, emotion, and anything else that matters. Maybe what you say to yourself, what others say to you, who's there. It is a full representation of it, okay? Now, when you, when you make the image, okay, to make the strongest impression on your unconscious, okay, is that it, it's when you visualize it, imagine that at the top of your head here, there was like a projector like halfway through, and from the back of your head is projecting here that image in that movie. So it's like behind this part of you in here, okay? It, that's where the strongest impression, which, which obviously we won't talk about more uh, in the course, but, but just, just today, um, that's the way it is. So we'll do a little fun exercise, okay? So, so first off, uh, can you all, you can all see my video, right? Look at the screen, you can, you can see my video, okay? So you can see it, here I am uh, talking to you all. Now just really quietly, just close your eyes and see that in your mind. So see it on the outside, right? And now close your mind and see it on the inside, okay? see it on the outside and then see it the best you can on the inside and notice you're not looking for that blurry fuzzy shape in your eyes you're looking to see it in the middle of your head right you're looking ahead to experience it back here this is where you're going to experience it. it's not the blurry stuff behind your eyes it's back here okay and so just see it on the outside and then imagine that you see that same image but you see it in the middle here Give me a yes in the chat box when you've been able to do it. 
see it on the outside now in your mind not not the not the light images behind your eyes see it back here awesome awesome okay so uh, uh hear me say structure is the new sexy and now in your mind hear it with my silly accent structure is the new sexy now hear it in your mind and I'll say it out loud, structure is the new sexy, and then hear it in your mind. Structure is the new sexy, hear it in your mind. Give me a yes when you can hear it. Can you hear it in the middle here too? It's in the middle, isn't it? You guys getting it? We have this, this place in the middle of our mind is where we do, where we create all the images from, right? Awesome. Awesome. It is in the middle. Isn't it interesting? A lot of people, when they say, I can't visualize, they're trying to visualize it behind their eyes and taking those blurry, um, you know, um, you know, spots that, but, but they're trying to see here. So they're realizing it's the images we create in here. Yeah. That, that's where we're going to do all the visualizing from. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do another fun few exercises before we get into our real visualization. I hope you guys are enjoying it. This is just the uh, the beginner of the beginner stuff. We're just getting you warmed up. Okay, I want you to to hold out your most dominant hand. Okay, hold out your most dominant hand. And uh, and uh, actually, we'll, we'll do we'll do this exercise. Uh, no, 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 we will just dominant hand out. And, and eyes closed, eyes closed, dominant hand out. Eyes closed, dominant hand out. And in your dominant hand, uh, I'd like you to just imagine, imagine the best you can that there's a rose, uh, a rose, a singular rose in your hand. And it might be a pink rose, it might be a red rose, whatever the rose is, it, it turns out. And just, just imagine this rose in your hand and you can see the, you know, the, the stem and, and maybe there's a few thorns on it and the petals and, and just imagine this rose the best you can. Imagine that there's a rose in your hand and, and do your best to maybe try to feel it a little bit. Maybe on the tips of your fingers, you can feel the, the soft petals or maybe to the base of your hand, you can, you can feel the thorns or maybe it's um, a bit prickly or, or maybe, you know, uh, maybe it's a bit wet because it was just freshly cut right maybe you can feel that wetness and just just imagine just imagine imagine the best you can that there's a rose there you know in in your in your hand and maybe you can even smell it maybe you can even smell it and do your best just to imagine it and see if you can feel it yeah That's it. And now just imagine that the rose floats floats up and it's imaginary. Just imagine that the rose floats up out of your hand and, and see if you can hover the rose like uh, the best you can in front of your face. Just imagine that it's there. Just imagine that same rose and then allow it to go up above your head and just have it go past your face up above your head. Uh, it's hovering above your head. Allow it to go back 50% back of the way. Okay back of back of the way and uh and now just let that rose just slide down into your mind and become a picture in the middle of your mind and just see if you can see it in the middle of your mind there yeah and let's see if you can yeah when you when you're ready come on back and let me know Awesome. Can still smell it. You did it. Wow. Amazing. Good stuff. <laughs> wow. 
Okay, we're going to keep going. Um, I know, I know, I told you the creator course is our most advanced stuff. Okay, so it's uh, it's very, you know, just, just so you know. Okay, so this time, um, in your non dominant hand, other hand, other hand, this time, uh, close your eyes and in your, in your other hand, non, non dominant hand, I just want you to imagine a, a lemon, like, you know, lemon, a fruit, the lemon. Just imagine there's a lemon and just feel the weight of that lemon in, in your hand. And, you know, it's a, it's a lemon and, you know, it's just, it's there. Just feel its weight and its texture. And uh, as you look down this lemon, it might be a yellow lemon or might be kind of green, it, it, you know, but it's, it's whatever size feels right. Just in your non-dominant hands, just, just feel this, this lemon. And you might even be able to smell the, the uh, the citrus uh, smell of this lemon and just just have it there in your hand and just imagine you're just holding it and it's there and you can feel its vibrancy and and just really create that lemon and know that it's there what it's like and um, smell it and and feel it and notice it and you might even feel the little dimples on the skin of the fruit or, or even the the ends of it where it's where it's a different shape and just really feel that lemon in your your non dominant hand. And, and now just just bring that lemon up close to your face and and it, it, as you bring it bring it up that's it bring it closer and closer you might be able to smell it a bit better bring it closer up to your to your face and uh, and as uh, and as it goes uh, closer go ahead and take a big bite of that lemon you, you can come back once you once you're done. Gross, bitter, ooh, sour, ouch. All right, there you go. The unconscious doesn't know, that, whose mouth watered, hey? Still puckered, everyone's laughing. Taste buds went off. Skin was not nice, no one likes the skin of a lemon. So here's what's faster. Give me a guess if you're able to get a sense of that lemon, even like taste or a smell or, or the rose. So the unconscious, I don't need to go into the science. The unconscious, as you've just demonstrated to yourself, doesn't know the difference between something that is actually there and that you are conjuring up in your mind. Can I get a yes if that truth has just been observed for you, not me, not anyone else? But if you have just observed that truth for you, for you, not for me, just want to know, did you do it for you? Because I want you to hold on to that truth. Because that truth is the foundational bedrock of being a creator. It is the foundation that is yours to always keep, is that your mind it doesn't know the difference between something that's happening or not happening. We're always living in the past or the future. We're bringing up memories from the past and feeling anxious now or thinking about the future and then bringing that stress to now. You see, it's not even here. We're continually pulling the past and the future to the now and then experiencing it as, as real. But really in the now, nothing's wrong. We're all here right now. We're, we've got heartbeat. We're, we're here. We're alive. We're having a good time. Like There's nothing wrong now. It's us bringing everything else in. And so what we learn in Creator is how to take our, our focus and start to teach our unconscious that what we want is completely safe to, to experience. Okay, that's what's important. As we, we go there, we build it up and we learn how to teach our brain with all of these different meditations, you know, a dozen meditations, 12 weeks to make sure uh, that, that this is what we teach our brain. And once your brain goes, that's how it is, then it can move forward. Does that sound good? That's that's what we're going to uh, to learn how to do. Cool. So this is just the basic stuff. Okay. So here's your first exercise. Well, I already gave you one, but I kind of skipped that forward. Here's your first exercise. For those of you who continue with the creator course, you'll be sent a meditation of this exercise we're about to do. And I'd like you to do it every single day. This is the focusing exercise. This is to train your brain to put its energy and focus in different um, places of your body, okay? So it's a really fun process. So let me just look at that time. 
we had our last break. We've had, our last break was an hour and 15 minutes ago. So I think what we'll do is we'll have a quick five minutes now so that no one's like busting to go to the restroom or uh, needing to do something. So I can do, because I want to do this exercise and then jump into the full visualization. So guys, it's just exercises uh, from here on moving forward. So I'd love uh, a quick five minutes uh, for everybody to, um, to, to just move their body a bit grab a glass of water, whatever you need. If it's 2 a.m. in the morning in the UK, you're incredible and you win uh, You win the award for being the most uh, uh, committed for sure. So does that sound good? So we have a quick five minutes now. Uh, and then when we come back, we're gonna jump straight into exercises. And uh, those of you who it's 2 a.m. in the morning, you have my permission to do the exercise eyes open or even standing up uh, so that you can get through it. And you're just, um, you're just incredible, I just wanna say. You freaking rock, Rhea. Rhea says it's almost 3 a.m. Okay, anyway, um, quick five minutes, and uh, and then we'll, we'll see you for the exercise. Does that sound good? All right, cool. 